are. Oh, thank you, because I sure forgot to record. <laughs> thank you, whoever recorded that for me. Yay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to show you some of the things that we have on campus as you come into campus, right? So um, the clinical simulation is something that we have, that we do to prepare you to take care of patients in the real world. So it's just like what it sounds like. It's a practice, it's kind of a setup. And I don't know if this video will play for you, but you can see our nursing students, hopefully, going into what we call our simulation room there. And you can see the simulation room here has our mannequin here, which simulates a real life patient. This mannequin can make sounds. This mannequin, you can take their blood pressure. You can take their pulses. You can listen to their heartbeat. You can listen to them breathing. And so it really is trying to simulate a real live patient for you. You'll notice that we have lots of different things in the room to assist you as you practice how to take care of your patient. And hopefully this might play. I'm not sure if it's gonna play because it wasn't playing for me like before. No, it's not gonna play. But I wanted you to kind of see the setup of a simulation room. So this room over here, you can see our mannequin is in the room. And right down below here is the control room. This is where I'm sitting. So I'm watching everyone through this window so that I can see what they're doing. Okay. And we have all these electronic uh, computers and controls and cameras that we are keeping um, track of so that we can see what you're doing while you're in that clinical simulation. Uh, most students find it fun, but they also know that it, they also find it really anxiety. It's like you're anxious because I'm watching you, right? So students get a little anxious, but in the end, they learn how to take care of their patients a lot better by going through these simulations. So what do you learn? Well, you learn lots, of, uh, lots and lots of things. First of all, all the faculty in our nursing program, they're all we're all registered nurses. And we all, if we're teaching in the classroom or in the labs, we all have masters in nursing. So you have to have a master's in nursing. And so we all do. We all have various backgrounds. Some of us have been ICU nurses. Some of us have been um, labor and delivery, helping moms give birth to babies. Some of us have been in an emergency room nurses. Some of us are travel nurses. I myself did a lot of pediatrics taking care of children as well as I was like in the hospital doing acute care. So most of us have had what we call medical surgical nursing, meaning that we were in the hospital taking care of patients. Some of us have been in community health, like I've been in community health um, as well. We've had nurse practitioners in our program too. Our um, other faculty that teach in the clinics, in the hospitals, they don't necessarily have masters, a lot of them have bachelor's degrees, but they've been nurses for a while. And so they can help our students to become nurses, right? And this is the education pathway that you will take to get to be a nurse. So we have everybody that comes in has to be a certified nursing assistant, or sometimes you'll hear it called nursing assistant certified. Now we offer that program too, mostly in the summer, but also in winter quarter at South, you will find the nursing assistance program. And that program is 10 weeks long. And at the end of that program, you can sit to get certified to be a nursing assistant. So once you're a nursing assistant and you've taken all the prerequisites to get into the program, then you can get into the program. You are in the associate degree nurse program. That program is gonna take you two years. So it's like six quarters. So we admit students in the fall quarter and winter quarter. And you will go through six quarters before you're eligible to graduate and to take the licensing exam. Our program is a full-time program. You cannot go part-time. So most of our students, we encourage them not to work too much because nursing is a very rigorous program. It's a difficult program. You have to learn quite a bit in the two years that we have you. So working is gonna be difficult, but we also know that our students have to work sometimes. So we just encourage them to work no more than 20 hours a week. 
And um, is this program part of a longer education program? Yes, because once you become um, an associate degree nurse, you sit for the licensing exam, you have your registered nurse's license, you can then get a bachelor of science in nursing. So you can go from nursing assistant to associate degree nurse to getting a bachelor of science in nursing. So our program takes about two years, three years if you include the prerequisites. To get a bachelor of science in nursing, you only need to go about one more year full-time or you can go two years part-time. And most of our students will be able to get into the University of Washington or Washington State because we have an agreement with those schools that if our students pass their licensing exam, they're eligible to go into those schools with mostly all their prerequisites already uh, met. And most of our students will get into those schools, right? Um, so in terms of careers and jobs, I, I really don't think I need to tell you guys a lot about why we so desperately need nurses. COVID brought out that issue front and center. Now everybody knows that there is a huge shortage of nurses, huge shortage of nurses. So I put up here the salaries that you see, that you can earn as a nurse. But nurses are everywhere. They're not just in the hospital. You could become a nurse researcher. So if you like to do research, researching, you can do that. You can work in the schools. You can work in clinics. You can work in dental offices as well because they do surgery. And so you can work in the OR, operating room. You can work in an emergency room. There are a lot of different career choices you can have. If you like babies and children, you can help moms deliver their babies as a midwife. You can become a nurse practitioner and have your own practice. So there's quite a bit that you can do as a nurse. And you don't have to stay in one field. I know some nurses, like I started out in medical surgical nursing, got tired of that, went to community health nursing and started working with children and adolescents. So you can switch up um, if you decide that you've, you've had enough, you've learned all you want from that, you can start to do another field of nursing. So it really is um, something that um, you can really engage in different types of practices for you. But you can see what those average salaries are here on, on the screen here. Um, so in terms of our program, going back to our program a little bit more, our program um, is full-time and it has three components to it. So you have to attend classes to learn nursing theory, you have to have a skills lab where we teach you skills such as how to manage IV fluids, how to put in what we call catheters, how to take uh, vital signs and blood pressures, um, how to um, give medications, which is really, really a big thing, how to, to do that. Um, and we also have what we call our clinicals. This is where you go to the hospital with an instructor to take care of a live patient, right? So. Those clinicals, your shifts can be eight hour shifts or 12 hour shifts. Um, they could be day shift, evening shift or weekend shifts. Um, sometimes you have to travel quite a ways from where you live, but we just don't know sometimes where our clinical spots are going to be. So you might have to travel to different hospitals. We are now at the at Virginia Mason Hospital. We have clinicals at the VA hospital. Um, St. Anne's Hospital in Burien. Um, we have at Northwest Hospital for our psychiatric. We were going to Western State for our psychiatric uh, rotations. I don't know that we're going to still go there. Um, so we go to a lot of different hospitals. Swedish as well for our OB, for our mommy, mom babies. We go there. Um, usually your schedule will come out when you're in the program. We have a calendar that we put out so that you will know about a month ahead of time, what your schedule is going to be. So this one, I, I don't think this video, none of my videos are playing today. Sorry, I don't know why. Oh, this one might play. So I'm just gonna play this little bit of video um, just about nurses in general, what, what they do and how they've been instrumental in helping to improve the health of um, our patients. Let me know if you guys can hear because I don't know if I shared when this when I started sharing if you can hear the sound. 
but I'm going to turn mine up just in case you can, so you can hear it. Okay, let me see if that'll fly. Can't hear it. Sorry, it's not playing. None of these videos are playing for me today. So don't know what that is. Um, okay. All right, sorry about that. None of my videos are playing, but however, um, if you want more information, um, you can actually go on Seattle Central's website and you will, um, and search for nursing programs and you will see our webpage that has this program email on there, as well as the, the number to call us. Um, we do have information sessions that we have usually once a quarter. We haven't had them so much with COVID, um, but um, we might have them, I think next quarter or maybe summer over Zoom so that you'll know when to apply for, to the program. Um, and they can answer all your questions about the program, what you're going to need to get in, um, what paperwork and documents that you're going to need to be in this program. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, all right, so let's see. Yeah, the record, somebody is, oh. Oh, I thought I was recording, sorry. I thought I was recording. Sophia? Yeah. Um, the next session for the nursing program is actually, it's February 25th. For the... You mean the information session? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, but I think they're going to do it over Zoom. Yeah, over Zoom. So you can, if you go to the information session, you can find out everything you need to apply for the program because I think our application process is going to start and end in April. So you have, I think, the month of April to apply as long as you have all your prerequisites ready to go. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pablo. <laughs> I forgot. Um, so, do you guys have any questions then about this the program? I love. Yes. <coughs> Samuel. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, so, um, I am here because um, I need your guidelines. Um, you know, I would go a long time ago, but I'm kind of lost. So when I get this email and register and to come to the Zoom meeting, I was so happy. But one of my expectation was uh, you guys as uh, our guidelines to ask us like, what you do, you might have, who, who knows? You might say it, um, maybe um, a little I'm, <laughs> A little ahead, but um, I want to know what we do, uh, why we're here, how you going to help us, guys. Uh, do you have that kind of um, atmosphere? Let's say I work for hospital as a nurse assistant, uh, yeah. and I've working for a long time, which is uh, since 2003. <clears throat> um, I want to go to nursing school. Um, so from what she said, <clears throat> excuse me, except that nursing assistant and many years experience of doing it, I don't have any of the prerequisites. So, um, you mentioned it's something you or Rachel, like, um, we're going to have that T test or something. Is it going to happen? Then are we going from there to take the prerequisite, how it works. I'm just kind of lost. So yeah, please. so you, you more than likely you should take your prerequisites first, right? You take your prerequisites first and then when you're ready to apply, you can take the T score. The T score is good for 18 months, right? So if you were to take the T's now, right? But you don't have your prerequisites, it's not gonna do you any good. So I would say you should get through most of your prerequisites. Then you can take the T's, T's test to see where you rank. 
and then you can then you can apply to the program but you have to have those prerequisites because you we can't let anybody in without them right and those prerequisites are listed on the website there are things like english 101 you have to take chemistry you have to take anatomy and physiology you have to take psychology those are all the courses that are going to prepare you to get, get into nursing school and prepare you for nursing school because we actually have a lot of our classes build on those things right so if you take anatomy right where you're learning about the human body when you come into nursing school we don't repeat that again right so we know you've already had that information so then we will continue to build on that information but you have to have those prerequisites plus you have to be a nursing assistant as well certified now you don't have to have any um actual experience as a nursing assistant but the things that they teach you when you are going to become a nursing assistant, we don't have to teach you again. So for example, the nursing assistant will teach you things like how to take a blood pressure. How do you listen to somebody's heart rate? How do you take a pulse, right? How do you take their temperature, right? How do you help somebody get out of bed? How do you help somebody take a shower? Those things. So we don't teach that anymore in nursing school because you already have that. If you're a nursing assistant, you already know how to do those things. So we build on what you already have, but you have to have those prerequisites. Does that answer your question? Uh, I think so, but um, I think it's case by case or place by place, but uh, some people, they told me like, um, they give you the assessment test, then they know where you are, then they guide you, okay, on this area you're good, but you need to take this and that, something like that. So. Um, I think I, you're sorry, Samuel. I think you're talking more about how do you get into like if you were just coming into Seattle Central College, where we have you do have to take some tests to see where you fit in for your math and things like that. There right. are some of those tests like that. That's on the main college campus, and I'm just talking okay. about getting into nursing school once okay. you. So you might have to take math 102 or whatever the math. I'm not even sure anymore what it is because I haven't looked at it, but. In order to get to that math, you might have to take another math course before you take that one. Navia, you were going to say something. Okay. So Hi. is, some, is somebody... Uh, Navia can maybe um, help you as well. Hi, Samuel. Okay. Uh, my name is Navia. I'm an outreach assistant at Seattle Central as well as a nursing student. I'm more than welcome to help you with the five-step process to apply. And I can also... Um, yeah, basically, yeah, there's five steps to basically register and um, apply for the college. Um, I can send a, you a link through the chat if you'd like, because like Althea said, she's only talking about the program, not the, the, the you know, the prereqs or the primary, the main campus where you'll be taking your prereqs at. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Of course. More questions? Yeah, I have a question. Elizabeth, yes. Yes, I am in ESL level 4B and and I'm working as a caregiver right now. I even just came back from the training, the teaching us how to how to take care of the cavity and all this stuff. And then I feel like uh, instead of doing a caregiver, I have to take my uh, job uh, uh, forward to uh, CNA, but I have a problem for math. As, and then like you explain, you have to pass the math and all this and stuff, but I'm still, I haven't reached that level that you even explain about the math. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And is it impossible for me to, I'm in level four, four, four B. Is it possible for me to register on that program for CNA certificate? Yeah, I think you can apply to that. I don't have that information right offhand because I wasn't prepared to talk about that. But oh. I, I think um, you, uh, once again, if you go to the website, Seattle Central College, and just put in nursing assistant certified, they will tell you everything that you need to become a nursing assistant. It's only oh. one quarter once you, um, have everything you need to become a nursing assistant. It's only one quarter, but I believe that you can do that even though your math is not where you want it to be yet. The problem will just be when you want to get into nursing school that you need to take you need to take those prerequisites. And so they have to figure out where you fit in the math, right? Mm -hmm. And so once they figure that out, 
they'll put you in the appropriate math course and then you'll keep going from there. But I think that as um, Navia has said, you know, they have outreach, they have tutors, I think on the main campus that you can actually go to and help people and help them um, get help with your math. Okay. Yeah. If you feel like that's the thing that's kind of holding you back a little bit. And yeah. when you do have to have math because as a nurse, you give medications and so you have to figure out how much medications you're gonna give, right? It's not high level math, but it is still math that you have to be pretty accurate about. And we have students who English is not their first language, lots of students, almost half our students, right? And they succeed in coming to nursing school and they succeed in, in going through the program. So you can too, if you want to. Okay, thank you. For you're welcome. Anybody else have any questions about the nursing program? Well, um, probably um, Navia is going to guide me. That's what my understanding, like um, I'm ready just mm -hmm. to take the prerequisites. Yes. So I just need some help on that. How to start. How to once, start, yes. Yeah, once, when I get That's there. <laughs> That's a good thing. And I yeah. do want to say too, in the, oh, go ahead, Navia. Sorry, Delphia. I was just going to say, Sam, but I saw your uh, chat. Um, thank you. I'll make sure to email you tomorrow morning with more information. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I do want to say, you know, I'm talking about how to get into nursing school, but once you get into nursing school, we don't want to, um, to have you feel like you've just been abandoned, that there's, that, you know, you have to make it through on your own. We now have, when we started this, uh, started this, this quarter, we now have a student peer mentoring program now. So we have students who are in the second year of the program are helping those first, the students who are in the first quarter of the program who are starting to come through the program. And they're gonna help them with things like, well, what do I do? Um, how do I do my clinicals? What do I do for this class? So they're gonna help. And we're really excited about that because um, we feel that having your peers mentor you really helps you to get through the program. We also have a student nurse association once you get into the program where we do things that will enhance your leadership skills and abilities too once you get into the program. So um, hopefully all of you are interested in, in being a nurse because like I said, I tried to talk everybody that I know into becoming nurses because it's such a, really it's a wonderful field. If you like taking care of people, you will not be, you, you can't go wrong with nursing because everybody is gonna need some help help sometimes um, within their lifetime. So it's, it's really a good thing. And nurses, this is the 20th year now that we've been voted the most trusted profession in the country, nurses. So people trust us. People trust us to give them really good information about their health and to help them navigate the healthcare system as well. So yeah, being a nurse is something I'm, I'm really proud of. It's given me a lot of opportunity to do lots of different things. And um, I wouldn't give it up for the world, although I think I'm getting ready a little bit to retire, maybe. Bernard. <laughs> Hi, I have a question to, um, I'm in level 5A right now. So I just want to make sure about the, um, if I just want to be a nurse assist assistant. So uh, can I start on the next quarter? So you have to apply. I don't think we're going to have nursing assistant next quarter, but we do have it in the summer. And I even taught it last summer at Seattle Central. We definitely are going to have the nursing assistant program in the summer. It will either be at, it will definitely be at South Seattle College and it may be at Central and North as well, but we okay. definitely have it over there South. Okay. So. Yeah. Also, how, how, how many is, is it going to take? Like how many is it going to take three, three months or? How no, many? it's a 10 week program, 10 weeks. Uh, okay. Right. So in the spring, then you would go, I believe it's eight weeks of class. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of weeks where you go out to the skilled nursing facilities, the nursing homes, and mm -hmm. you'll go and take care of patients for those two weeks too. It's like, so, or maybe it's like 40 hours that you have to do. Okay, so I just want to do for summer. Uh, I just want to register for summer. If you guys send me the link for that. Okay, so um, I heard that the nursing program is extremely competitive. So what we do, I love what we do. So what we do is 
everybody's application is due by April 30th, I believe. So you have one month, well, you have until April 30th to get your application in. Once you have your application in, we go through and make sure you, everybody who is applying has all the prerequisites done, their T score and everything is on par. And then what we do is a lottery system. So what we do is the computer generates some numbers and we put those numbers with your name. And so we just pull out 90 people. So it's, it's, it's competitive, but it's not like we take everybody with 4.0s. No, we don't. We take everybody who um, has met the prerequisites and whose name is in that pot of 90. So they just randomly pull names and that's how you get in. So it's Seattle Central's commitment to making sure that we give opportunities to people that maybe couldn't get in the University of Washington, you know, couldn't get in some other place. It's not that you aren't smart enough. It's just that those are really competitive and only people with 4.0s, 4.5s get in. But we want to give everybody um, a chance. Um, I think it's time for us to go back. The breakout rooms are going to be ending now. But um, once again, go to the website. Just search for nursing. You'll find all the information there as well as when the information sessions are going to be and for the nursing assistant program. I think the next time we do this, we'll have somebody from the nursing assistant program to talk to you about it too. All right, guys, thank you. Thanks, Sylvia. You're welcome. Looks like everybody was kicked out. Looks like somebody stopped the phone. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. I misspoke. Okay, well, um, as everyone is gathered back, thank you so much for picking out one of the breakout rooms. I hope you received some good information. And um, I work in the outreach admissions department at Seattle Central. So if there are any questions, uh, feel free to direct them in the chat about getting started. If you haven't started the um, enrollment process, it can get a little bit complicated depending on your particular history and background. Um, like if you've attended a college in the past and you have transcripts, that kind of thing. But basically ap applying is free. Uh, you get processed in a couple of days, you get an email back with a student ID number, and you do every step after that with that number effectively. Um, so feel free to, again, put questions into the chat. And I would like to introduce uh, a couple of our students that are joining us who are in the medical programs. So we'll just start with Navia, and I'd like you to chat with, uh, tell us what you like about your program and what made you decide to choose uh, that program. Hi guys, my name is Navi Pinello. I'm a nursing student here at Seattle Central. Uh, well, I like many things about the school, about the program. One of them is that all of the staff members really don't want you to succeed. So I. If I could give you advice, I would say to be as honest and transparent with all of your staff, with all of your professors. If you're having a hard time, be vulnerable and let them know, and they're more than willing to help you out. Um, another 
thing that another thing that I like about the nursing program is that we get our own floor at the Pacific Tower. So it's a, a different campus, um, separate campus from the main campus. Um, and one of the reasons, or a few of the reasons why I chose Seattle Central to work on my, or to complete my prereqs is because it's affordable. Um, more, it's more affordable than going to a four year um, and it's location. So the location, the Seattle Central main campus location is so close to many places. So in between classes, I can grab lunch or I can go thrift shopping or I can just go to Calendar State Park and lay in the sun during the summer that is. Um, let's see. Um, I guess that's really basically it. Besides the fact that everyone that applies to Seattle Central gets accepted. Um, oh, and um, Seattle Central offers so many resources that includes workforce, um, Seattle College Foundation Scholarship, child care assistant program. Um, they also offer counseling, which is now off offered online. Um, my nurse, the nursing program is actually paid by the grants that I received from workforce, workers retraining and opportunity grant. Uh, yeah. And I'm not sure if I said this, I'm also an outreach assistant. I work, um, my boss is actually Gina. Um, so if you guys have any questions about admissions or registering for courses, uh, please join the Zoom drop-ins between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Fridays. And it doesn't have to be just nursing students. This is just for everyone. I love it. Thank you so much, Navia. I'm going to take Bernard's question, and then if Liz is available to also introduce herself um, and answer the same questions that you just did, Navia. Bernard, wondering about how nursing students um, inside of Running Start so basically in Running Start, you can complete what is called the prerequisites for nursing. That's a lot of anatomy, biology, um, you know, pretty much like the basic classes that you need, you can do in Running Start, um, which there's a lot of prereqs for nursing. So that is very possible. And there's also, if anyone is a high school student in Seattle, um, there is something called Seattle Promise, which basically, as long as you graduate from a Seattle public high school, you can be eligible for the Seattle Promise and continue your education for free up to your first degree earned at any of the Seattle colleges. So if you're not aware of that, that is a great program to utilize after Running Start if you choose to do Running Start. Um, and there's a link that Delphia posted above and then Liz, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us why you chose the program you chose to study? Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I go by Liz. Um, I work for Gina as well at the outreach uh, department. Um, I'm doing my prereqs for dental hygiene. And uh, so far it's been great. The professors at Central are amazing. Uh, just like Navia said, they're very understanding. So being transparent helps a lot, especially if you're not understanding things or if you're a little confused. They do take their time to make sure you're at the level that you need to be to complete a class, which I find very amazing. Um, I chose dental hygiene because I had a big impact with a dental hygienist when I was 15. And uh, when I heard Central had a program, I was very excited. Um, I'm not from Seattle, so I asked a lot of questions from like people I've met so far about schooling and I have a lot of hygiene friends and they all recommend Seattle Central it seems to have a really good reputation in the outside world. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions about prereqs or if you're struggling on trying to figure out what classes to take for prereqs um, or what teacher recommendations, I can absolutely help anybody with any questions. I love it. Thank you, Liz. It's so nice to hear from current students who are taking classes in our healthcare programs, even during our time of COVID um, and succeeding and utilizing all of those student resources. Thank you for mentioning that, Navia. Don't forget students, there's emergency funding, scholarships, tons of support and help there for you, mental health counselors, you name it, food pantry, uh, everything 
we've pretty much got you covered. You need to borrow laptops or hotspots, we've got you. Um, so thank you so much for everyone joining today. There's some great chats in the session. I see that Bianca has a question, so I'll go ahead and address that. Um, asking about Seattle Promise for Summer programs. Um, basically, there's no specific summer programs that I know of, but if you mean like, can you start in the summer? Effectively, you can start Seattle Promise as soon as you complete, you actually get awarded, your, you're actually graduated. We can verify that you graduated high school. Um, so I'm not sure if you could start say the summer quarter after being a senior in high school, because I don't know if your graduation would be determined by then, but as soon as your graduation is determined, that's when you can start Seattle Promise. Okay, any other burning last minute questions for this session? All right, well, happy Valentine's Day and have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Bye, Gina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye, Josh. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, presenters. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Thank you for hanging out, hanging in there with me at the beginning. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.